Hello and welcome to Gaga Knits. My name's Anita and I live in South Wales in the UK and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Anita Ball and show notes can be found in the description box below. We are now at the end of January. It is Sunday the 24th today and the reason why I'm recording today rather than my usual Tuesday is because we have workmen in doing some renovation work and on Tuesday they'll be here banging and crashing around so I thought it'd be better today while it was quiet and this morning we woke up to snow. I love snow, it's so exciting so I'll put a little video in of how beautiful it was in my back garden this morning and how peaceful and you can hear the birds singing Today I thought I'd share with you some of the projects I've been working on. I have been mostly knitting and doing some cross stitch. I have done a few other little bits and pieces but nothing that I'm going to show you this time I might show you next time instead. So we start with the cardigan that I have been working on which was the uh, pattern by Louisa Harding. It was out of an old Women's Weekly magazine and in that it's called Cranberry Crush. I shall show you the picture here. But it's actually called just Lace Cardigan on Ravelry. I had looked to see if you could get hold of the pattern, but unfortunately it's on Ravelry so you can see people's projects, mm. but it's only available in Louisa Harding's book called Modern Classics. But that's quite old now, so you probably could pick one up second hand if you wanted to do. So I've done the, I finished the back and I finished the two fronts and it's all in pieces. And I'm not a huge fan of knitting in pieces now that I've discovered you can knit whole garments all in one piece. I'm using size four and five millimeter um, circular needles and these are the ones I'm using the Knit Pro Symphonies. I really like Knit Pro Symphonies and with this very very soft slippery yarn they're quite good because they're a good grip. Now I have done the front edge of the right hand side. So you have to do an eyelet um, sort of trim and I was a bit concerned because you were supposed to pick up 101 stitches and I picked up 73 but I did cast off with a stretchy bind off and I think that's going to be fine I I try to remember when I was knitting it up to slip the first stitch on every row to make it easier to uh, sew them together and pick up stitches and it worked out about um, seven stitches per two inches and I should have picked up ten but I think it would have been really baggy if I'd done that and I did say last time that I was only going to work on that and nothing else because otherwise I wouldn't get it finished but I think I've done some quite good progress and I did cast on um, a new project pretty much as soon as I told you that because it was New Year's Eve and obviously none of us are going anywhere and I wanted to knit on something while we were watching the telly and staying up till midnight and I didn't want it to be that because I might have had a glass of wine or two and knitting and alcohol I found do not really go together very well so I wanted something quite simple so I decided to start a pair of socks and I really wanted to get to grips with working with nine inch circulars because I haven't got on with them before, but I was determined not to let it beat me. And I have been using these Addy Sock Wonder needles and it's the 2.5 millimeter. 
and I, I like these ones it's not too bad because the one needle that you work that you actually hold is longer than the other one let me take these little things off so it's the one you actually work with is that is that much longer and it's just enough to be able to hold them without you getting a cramp so I can use nine inch circulars now and I finished one complete sock here it is it is in the Sirdar Heart and Soul Happy Camper colorway four ply and it's quite um, it feels quite rough but it's fine on your feet and then I've just got contrast cuff heel and toe I don't know what that is but it matches perfectly I think and I'm that far along on my second one just knitting round and round I've got my lovely little stitch marker from Stitches and Jacks and it's a really nice thing to knit on when I don't want to think so just going round and round but saying I'm not thinking I'm using my knitting notes book that I bought from Ellie from Craft House Magic several years ago I did change the book that was inside because I like a floppy book and I'm making notes on how I am making these socks because I want to make my own sock recipe that fits perfectly and I was watching Tina from Simply and Stitches podcast the other day and she was saying that she knits the socks but takes the pattern from um, so say she buys a, a, pa a sock pattern she takes the pattern from it but uses her own sock recipe so she knows they fit I thought that's a good idea so these socks I'm a size five foot and these socks are uh, I cast on 56 stitches and I did them cuff down and I then did a two by two rib for 15 rows um, I knit 34 rows for the leg then I did the heel flap and gusset and then I knit 36 rows for the foot and then I did just the normal toe decrease and it's quite it is a nice fit. it's a little bit snug but I'm thinking I hadn't put it on the sock blocker um, and I, I think it'll stretch out a little bit when I do block it properly so I think that's quite a good quite a good fit so I'm happy with that so that's that project out of the way let's put it to one side now my other new cast on is Ellie from Craft House Magic's Vault because she is doing a make long called the uh, craft 20 a day so that's the hashtag I'm keeping it in this huge ba basket from Ikea and it's in this basket because the balls of yarn I am using are this big <laughs> huge and let's get everything out so I can show you I'll put that back. I've got two two of those huge balls of yarn and I am making the uh, Barrett counterpane now when Martin and I several years ago went to the Lake District on holidays we went to Kendall and it was raining and we popped into this little museum and they had it was um, had all tapestry uh, sort of panels along the walls that you could look at and it also had this Barrett counterpane which is obviously a bedspread uh, there I don't know if you can see it I will link the video there's a YouTube video to tell you all about the history of it it's really it's the Quakers so it's the Quaker Tapestry Exhibition Centre it was in and this counterpane is made up of these knitted squares and then fabric squares that the various uh, embroiderers had embroidered themselves and there's a little bit of history in every square it's really nicely done anyway the video will tell you all about that and what I liked about it was all the different stitches you get to do and you knit from corner to corner so it sort of comes out in a square like that and I've done this much so far 
Uh, so I've done the bobbles here and then the this bit is called the wheat ear pattern. I don't know if you can see them very well. They're not as um, precise or clear as they should be because I am using Aran weight yarn and I think you were supposed to use I think it was oh four ply four ply cotton and I'm using this this yarn because someone gave me the two big balls of it and it's from pound stretcher and it's 97% acrylic 3% viscose and it's machine washable and it's going to be a huge big blanket so it's good that I could be able to throw it into the machine so I've been enjoying working on that and uh, I look forward to all the different sections. So I have just got to about um, here and then the next one will be some more bobbles and the next section after that will be a lace pattern. And it's only £2 this pattern, you can still send for it and it all goes to the to the Quaker, what does it go to? Goes to the Quaker Tapestry Community Conservation Project, I think it says. My eyes, I hate it when they put light coloured print on a light coloured background. Very hard for old eyes to read. But I'm really enjoying that and I'm joining in with Ellie and it's a year long, little long. She explains it all really well in her podcast. Um, so that's all my knitting. I'm trying not to do too many things all in one go. And then I have got some cross stitch that I'm doing. The first one is from... I'm making a tablecloth from this fabric that my sister-in-law sent me. Here it is. It's got lots of little squares all around the edge and I'm going to fill each square with a little picture and I'm starting off with the months of the year. Oh, would be upside down, wouldn't it? And the first one is January. There we are. This month and I've got the patterns from Cross Stitcher magazine. It was a free calendar and um, you get all the different months. So there's the calendar itself propped up. And you can actually get the kit for the project from willowfabrics.com. So I should put their details down below if you want to make the different, or if you want to make the calendar up yourself. Right, so there's that. So that actually, although it's really teeny tiny, took me ages. I did think I could perhaps go over two squares. I wasn't sure if the little squares that I have to keep each little project in um, would be big enough. But I think they look quite sweet small. Uh, So there's that, and my other project that I'm working on is my grandson's blanket. And at the moment I'm using this book to do some alphabet squares. And I am trying to do one square a month. And this month I did G, H and I. And this was another gifted piece of fabric from my sister-in-law who's very generous and a lot of the threads are from her as well because I'm just using all the threads I've got in stash. I had some but my sister-in-law also sent me loads so they're going in there. Nothing is wasted. And that's pretty much all my projects I've been working on apart from a few other things like I say that I will show you at a later date. And the only other thing I wanted to share with you were, was the building work that's going on. 
Now we have lived in this house for nearly eight years and it was built sometime after the Second World War. It's a three bedroom semi, it's got a tiny kitchen and on the side of the house there's a little extension. It was there, built with the house but it, it houses a downstairs toilet, a coal shed and a washroom and it's always been horrible. There's a drain in the little corridor. The ceiling is concrete. It's single skinned. It gets damp. It gets condensation. It's horrible. I will put some pictures in to show you. I'm going to show you the before because at the moment we're at the dew ring and then next month I'll hopefully show you the after when it's all finished. So it's very exciting because I've waited a long time to have this done and it is safe because I know with the pandemic and everything you are allowed to have workmen in and you're even allowed, I looked it up, to have a film crew in your house. I have no idea about these things but because it's on the side of the house they're separate from us so uh, we have very little contact. Just occasionally they want to ask um, a question about where I want something or just to make sure everything's how I want it. And obviously I take them the old cup of tea and apart from that we kept separate so it's very safe but it's it's so nice to have something to look forward to. So I'll put a few pictures in of that for you to see the before, how grotty it was and how nice hopefully next month it's going to look. I feel I've just rushed through everything. It takes me ages to prepare it all and then oof, gone in a minute. I shall see you all at the end of next month. Hopefully it'll be back to a Tuesday instead of a Sunday, but it doesn't really make any difference, does it? If you subscribe and hit the notification button and then whenever my videos pop up, if you want to see them, you'll know when they're there. I hope you're all keeping safe and well and enjoying your crafting and your crafting's getting you through this awful time. Um, until next time, bye for now. Thank you.